Hello, and welcome to module three of the AI Skills for Nonprofits training series. In this third session, we'll explore what it means to use AI responsibly, and we'll talk about AI ethics, safety. We'll try to better understand what responsible AI is, explore AI governance as well, and showcase you the Institute's own approach to AI to inspire you in developing your own AI policy. We will also look at the concept of critical thinking with the objective to better understand how to apply this critical skill when using AI. Let's dive in. What are AI ethics? Well, AI ethics are like the rules of the road, but for artificial intelligence. They help guide how we build and use AI so that it's fair, safe, and respectful. Let me give you a few principles. Fairness means that AI shouldn't discriminate. Just like we expect a judge to treat everyone equally, AI should do this too. Privacy is about protecting people's personal data. You can think of it as like keeping someone's diary safe and locked away. Transparency means that we should know when we're interacting with an AI tool and understand how it, it makes its own decisions. It's like being able to read the recipe behind a dish, your favorite dish. Accountability means that someone has to take responsibility if something goes wrong. And finally, safety, it ensures that AI doesn't cause any harm to any creature. It's like checking a machine is safe before letting anyone use it. But where are we now in terms of AI governance? AI governance is all about frameworks, regulations. It's like laws, but for AI. There are some global efforts, such as the EU AI Act that is being implemented right now across the European Union. And there are also some voluntary guidelines that some companies choose to follow, such as the OECD AI principles. However, these guidelines, they are not enforced. At the same time, there are some raising concerns regarding deep fakes, AI biases, and some other issues. And with this in mind, there is increasing pressure for stronger regulation and better cooperation between countries when it comes to AI governance. Talking about biases and discrimination, AI can reflect and even worsen human biases. We do have to keep in mind that these models, they are trained on huge data sets compiled by humans. Those data sets are likely to contain human bias. For example, if a hiring algorithm is trained mostly on data from male candidates, it might unfairly reject women. That's why we need to check whether AI works well for all groups. Now, on this slide, you do have a very clear visual representation of AI bias. With all this in mind, organizations around the world are calling for human-centered AI. Human-centered AI is an approach to developing artificial intelligence that prioritizes human needs, values, and well-being. It's about putting people first. Instead of replacing people, it should support and empower us. It's like a helpful assistant and not a boss. It's about making sure AI respects our rights, meets our needs, and helps us do our work better, especially in nonprofits. Now, Let's watch this short video together to learn more about responsible AI. Ever hear the old saying, you are what you eat? Well, when it comes to AI, that's especially true, which is why it's essential we talk about responsible AI. By providing AI with diverse, accurate, and de-biased information, we set the table for it to better serve everyone. And all that requires is a principled development mindset. One that looks at how AI will be used and how it can make a positive difference in the world. We can begin with something as simple as transparency around where AI sources information and how that information shapes its responses. Another priority is data security, establishing systems and protocols to safeguard confidential material. And by building diversity into both our teams and our data, we can help prevent inherent biases from impacting the model. As we continue to work with AI, we need to keep a close eye on it, auditing and adjusting settings, training and retraining our models. Because while AI has incredible potential, it's on all of us to use it to do good. Let's define responsible AI. 
Responsible AI refers to the development and deployment of AI systems in a manner that is ethical, transparent, and accountable. It's about doing the right thing with technology. It means developing and using AI in a way that's fair for everyone, regardless of their social context, background, geography. AI is a solution to all of us. For example, imagine using an AI to screen grant applications. Responsible AI would make sure the process is clear, not biased, and that applicants' data is protected. Why do we need responsible AI? Well, according to the Artificial Intelligence Index report from 2024, created by Stanford University, the total number of reported AI incidents has grown exponentially from 2012 to 2023. That number has increased almost 10 times than 11 years ago. In this context, we need responsible AI because like any tool, AI can be used well or poorly. Without proper checks, AI might reinforce discrimination or spread misinformation. It's like teaching a child you want them to be thoughtful, not just smart. That's the kind of intelligence we should aim for AI as well. How does responsible AI translate into practice? Well, first of all, we need governance. We need clear rules and frameworks that can help us govern artificial intelligence. Then we need explainability so we can understand how the AI made its decisions. One of the biggest challenges nowadays is the actual opaqueness of AI algorithms. That is something that is still needs to be improved. Next is fairness and transparency, to avoid bias and to be open about how AI is being used. And of course, strong protection for privacy, security, and safety. This is very important. To summarize all this, it's like having both seatbelts and traffic rules for driving safely. Now, please allow me to tell you more about our own journey as a nonprofit towards responsible AI. At the Cyber Peace Institute, we are choosing a human-centric approach. We are encouraged to use AI tools, but with care and being very mindful. Never sharing sensitive data and always thinking about how these tools align with our mission and values. We do encourage our colleagues to experiment, to look for tools that are more accurate and appropriate to the tasks that they have to complete and their roles. Keeping in mind though, that at the end of the day, AI is a solution to our needs and using it responsibly. With all this in mind, we did go ahead and create our own AI guidance policy. Now this eight page document tells us as staff of this organization, how to best use AI, what is accepted, what we can maybe pay more attention to and be mindful of, and also how the Institute can support us in this journey of experimenting with artificial intelligence. At the same time, the actual template of this policy is also shared into our flagship program, the Cyberpeace Builders. In the program, cybersecurity experts volunteer their time for free as well as their expertise to help nonprofit organizations enhance their cyber resilience. We've already done so many missions this far in, with nonprofits looking at developing their own AI guidance policy, starting from this template, from our own policy here at the Institute. And this is a very nice collaborative effort of sharing information and helping each other. Now let's take a step back and look at some best practices when using AI in your nonprofit. First step is to develop clear ethical guidelines. We just talked about this in the previous slide. Having an AI guidance policy in place can go a long way into helping your colleagues avoid biases and be more alert and mindful to them. It is also equally important to keep a human in the loop. Even if we're talking about automated processes or just asking for the AI to generate some text, it's very important to check all responses, edit them and make sure that they are accurate. We're going to talk about critical thinking in just a moment. And very importantly, do offer training so people know what AI can and can do. This way you can bring everyone at the same level and all, all of your colleagues are going to have the same advantage as you do. Let's explore now the concept of critical thinking. As you well know now, 
AI learns from patterns in data. But if that data is flawed and full of biases, it can be misleading. That's why we need critical thinking. The skill to question, verify, and think things through before acting on AI suggestions. Critical thinking is an essential skill, especially nowadays in the 21st century, when we are constantly connected, our social media feeds are always on the move, and we get bombarded with so much information that to some point we don't even know what is true and what is not. Talking of not knowing what is true or not, well, misinformation slash disinformation is a very serious issue in our societies today. Misinformation can be defined as false or inaccurate information that is spread without the intent to deceive. It's by mistake, let's say. On the other hand, disinformation is clearly false information that is deliberately spread to deceive people. It's done on purpose. It's very important to know the difference between these two concepts. Think of misinformation as someone getting a fact wrong, just randomly, by mistake, and disinformation as someone twisting a fact on purpose to trick you or to get you to do a specific action in their favor. On the screen, you have a clear example of AI-based disinformation generation and dissemination. An AI can look for different articles, for headlines coming from trusted news sources to produce counter articles. Then those counter articles, they are uploaded onto fake websites and they are going to be further spread by using fake social media accounts, also known as bots, to actually get more traction. It's a model that is commonly used nowadays, and we've seen this so many times, especially during election periods. AI is even capable of writing fake reviews on Amazon for specific products. On the screen, you have now another example of this. However, in this example, maybe the AI wasn't that smart because it practically <laughs> exposed itself, as you can see that's highlighted in the, in the box on the screen. As an AI language model, I do not have personal experience using this workbook. But however, what is alarming is that AI can be plugged into different websites to generate reviews, to generate content. We can even teach AI to spew this information. And this goes back to the idea of uh, the main data set that the AI model is trained on. If that data set is infected, if we may use this word, with uh, fake content, of course then when being asked a question, as factual as possible and as well written the prompt, it's only going to spew this information. What this information wants to get from you is to reshare the content and spread it further into your network. So please always be mindful and do not reshare without asking yourself a few questions like, why is this article or video putting so much emotional pressure on me? Who is behind this? Who would want me to further share this? Because then if you share, that might trigger a vicious circle of never ending spreading false information and we want to avoid that. Another big challenge are deepfakes. Deepfakes are AI generated videos or audio clips that might look or sound real, but in fact they aren't. They can be used to impersonate people or spread false information, which can damage trust and even manipulate elections. Always double check sources, especially if something seems off and do always trust your gut feeling. For example, at the beginning of last year, after a deepfake video call with their chief financial officer, a finance worker paid $25 million. This happened to a British company based in Hong Kong. Another thing that you should be mindful of is that deepfakes have so many different potential uses. As you can see on this graphic in front of you now on the screen, uh, according to the Artificial Intelligence Index report of 2024, deepfakes have two big categories, visual and audio. With only three seconds of your voice, a malicious actor can create a full conversation. 
and in terms of visual, someone can film themselves and then just face swap. Use your face instead of theirs to appear like you are the one sending the message. So this goes back to our own digital hygiene when we are on social media, to what we publish there, what we share, and how we set our privacy settings. Do make sure that your privacy settings are on the strictest level possible. Let's do a quick exercise. Which one of these images was uh, generated using deepfake technology? You can pause the video, look at these images, and then I will change the slides so you can see the results. And yes, if you answered image number two, that's where deepfake technology was used to generate this image. Image number one is the original person, and you can see how in image number two, the face of another person was swapped with the face of the actual person in image one. Let's watch this video together now to maybe try to spot the difference between the original video and the deep fake generated video.